Uh, let's get started. Uh, let me bring up my agenda. Uh, the usual rundown of what viewers are out there um, hasn't really changed. We've got the project viewers for Oculus Rift and Viewer Managed Marketplace. There's a, a maintenance viewer working its way through the pipeline. And there's the candidate viewer for experience tools. Uh, there will shortly be a couple of others. We'll, we'll be getting to those. Um, let's see. So uh, experiences, nothing much has changed about that. We're still working on some back end issues that have to be uh, fixed up before we can turn that stuff loose. But um, there are no uh, viewer changes associated with that stuff. So that's just waiting. Um, group chat, we continue to make changes, roll out additional changes to try to make group chat more robust. Uh, we're, we're basically pretty happy with the, the performance, the, the amount of group chat lag, but we're uh, still working on having it not lock up every now and then. Um, so uh, we're not going to give up on that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep at it. And we, we are continuing to put in additional instrumentation and experiments to try to there work was a that out. period over Christmas when all the groups were dead, and it actually forced us to take a break. <laughs> well, you know, holidays are good for that. So uh, you can just consider that a Christmas present. But uh, yeah, we did have kind of a, a you know a bad bad run of luck there. Um, but uh, we're still we're still slugging away at it, and we'll 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 find it sooner or later. Uh, uh, um, viewer managed marketplace. There isn't really any new news on, um, so we can we, I can sort of breeze over that right away, I think. Um, Hover, we have a bunch of news on. Uh, I will turn the floor over to Veer for that. All righty. Uh, let's see, we talked about this a little bit, uh, I think a couple of meetings ago, but uh, as a refresher for anybody who wasn't around then, the, the idea with the Hover feature is to uh, give people a bit of extra control on getting the vertical positioning of their avatar right uh, for a variety of reasons it can wind up that you're uh, you know too high up or you're embedded in something it doesn't look quite right um, so this is a way that people can tweak their uh, position and then have the results of that tweak uh, shared so that other people using supported viewers can also see uh, the effect of the setting um, so this is a setting that's uh, persisted in the uh, per uh, the per account uh, settings file, and uh, so when you first log in, it'll restore it from that if you have a, a setting, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll send it out to everyone else through the uh, appearance message uh, mechanism. So we've got this in a uh, we think a pretty good state that it's ready for some uh, testing. It's going to go through a round of uh, uh, internal QA soon, and then. Uh, uh, early next week, we should have this out as a project viewer that people can uh, test it with. Um, so we have some test regions set up where uh, there's there's some regions that have the new changes that are required on the SIM side uh, to support this, and then uh, there are regions next door that don't have the support. So uh, that, that'll give people a chance to exercise the uh, cross-region functionality as stuff is supposed to get enabled and disabled appropriately as you uh, kind of move in and out of supported regions. Um, so uh, I guess that's uh, basically the the summary. Well, uh, as I say, that should be out uh, in a form that people can exercise it. Uh, we'll have a, a write-up on the process there, and then 
hopefully if anybody wants to to give it a shot and uh, runs into issues then uh, uh it would be great if if they could file uh bug reports on it and uh, let us know about any uh any problems they run into that's awesome thank you Vera. Uh, the grid the regions that are set up are on the beta grid uh yeah this is all on a dd okay good yeah, the uh, the the changes are in the pipeline to get onto the production grid, but we'd rather have a round of testing on the on the beta grid first. Um, actually, uh, there's a there's another change working its way just barely ahead of this one uh, through the main grid uh, that uh, is kind of kind of a nice thing for for this testing effort and for future ones. Um, you will all remember that it, in, in the past we've had lots of things where if you went to Blue Steel, you could do such and such, but if you leave Blue Steel and come back, you will have lost information and it won't work right anymore. Um, we're, uh, we're actually making changes to the simulator for region crossings and teleports that will preserve information that the regions don't know what to do with and don't understand so that if you go back to a region that does know what to do with them and does understand them, you will still have it, um, which is, uh, you know, may seem obvious, but it wasn't there and now it is. Uh, so um, that actually will be, that's sort of one step ahead of the hover change in the, uh, in the in the simulator side release pipeline and uh will end up actually hover will actually end up being sort of the first live fire test of of that so um it's a so in the future we'll have an easier time uh and a little less inconsistency uh in rolling things out to the changes that require carrying information around with you um it, of course it was it was not as simple as it seemed like it ought to have been. Uh, that's the way it is. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, there is uh, another update to the um, SL voice files. Uh, we will be putting up. We're, we're, we've got a. We're building the package for the new tool chain. Um, and that will be up shortly. Uh, so um, that's that's cool. Uh, but of course, the files are the same. You can pick them up and drop them into the old tool chain as well. But you just have to repackage them. What's new uh, in that? Uh, a whole bunch more. Um, well, a bunch of fixes for various quality problems. Uh, Vivox has been doing a lot of work on assorted kinds of quality problems um, and disconnects um, and also a whole bunch of instrumentation that will uh, enable them to give us quite detailed um, voice quality reports um, uh, which is which is great so then we can um, we can are figure there out be any updates to linux files no um, sorry i keep bugging them about it but they keep saying no. And would you guys consider uh, packaging the 64-bit voice files uh, since you get it as a binary SDK anyways? Um, well, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Um, there are There's a 64-bit um, Vivox voice service for Windows. Uh, slvoice.exe is a renamed uh, Vivox binary SDK file. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. I mean, if it's easy, we can do it. But it is literally copy pasting files from one zip file into the, your um, tar packages. Uh, I'll I'll have a look at it. I will. Um, it if that was there, I didn't know about it. So uh, I'll have to I'll have to dig into it. But um, if it's easy, there's no reason why we shouldn't do it. Um, the uh, which which actually touches on you know new to, new tool chain stuff. Um, so as of uh, yesterday or or night before last rather, 
uh, we have finally gotten successful builds on both Windows and and the Mac in the new tool chain. It kind of looks like we're pretty close on Linux too, but we haven't we haven't done that yet in our build farm. Um, so uh, that's actually really coming. We will be getting into the usual Project Viewer release candidate pipeline with that. And, of course, when that stuff makes it to viewer release, then all the code in viewer release will expect that you're using the new version of AutoBuild and uh, other uh, other new versions of tools to build properly. So we've moved up to um, the current version of Xcode 6 and to Visual Studio 2013. Uh, and... Uh, I think that will actually, in the end, be really good for everybody. So, uh, it'll it'll go out as a project viewer first, but it probably won't stay that way long. It, it will stay that way as long as it takes us to do a full, at least as long as it takes us to do a full regression test, which is more than we usually do for a regular release. And depending on how much competition for QA time, there is that might take as much as a couple of weeks um, and assuming that goes well which we all hope it will then uh, it, it'll go to RC after that um, but uh, it will get a, a really thorough going over before before we uh, take it out of project fewer status uh, you know me better than to make me give a date uh, your, your guess may or may not be as good as mine, but I'm not going to tell you mine, so we won't get to compare. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is that is actually happening uh, at last. Uh, so we're we're uh, pretty pumped about that, um, and because it, it means we can go back to building features and fixes and fun stuff. Uh, so, um, well, 64-bit, uh, you know, on either of those platforms is something that all this work makes somewhat easier to try to tackle, but, um, I'm, I'm going to try and build stuff users will care about first, so... And placebo is everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we 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 have to we have to make the people who care about features happy too. So we're going to try and do some of that. Well, we found that if we make 64-bit and tell people it's faster, then everybody thinks it's just like the best thing ever, and it's like super fast. <laughs> but it can be faster because 64-bit binaries have access to more registers. True, but I, I don't actually think it's any faster. It's more stable for one reason or another. But it, 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 the overall CPU time is slightly lower. But the main moral is you just tell people it's better, and it just is. The the fact that you have you say more stable because it takes longer to run out of RAM. Is very depressing, Kada. Well, it, Which, your memory it, leaks. But it, it, but that may be true. And, and that is unfortunately true. <laughs> and and it, you know, in some sense, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't accept that as an excuse or as a methodology. But um, in some sense, I mean, if it takes longer to run out of memory and you get to keep on going longer, well, that's good, right? That's better. Um, so we'll see. Uh, So, uh, I, I, I cannot at this point make any, any commitments at all about 64 bit, but, um, I can say that we're, you know, we have done work that contributes to making that easier if we decide to do it. So we'll see. Um, so anyway, I guess the, 
Floor is open because I've, I've burned through my agenda really fast. Oh, uh, uh, Veer, did you post the link to that wiki page about the hover stuff? Is that uh, ready to no, post? I'll, uh, I'll stick that in. Uh, it's uh, lindenlab.com. One is that? Uh, oh, well, we'll we'll copy it out to the out to the public wiki before we get um, by the time we get the project viewer out. Um, we'll do that. So you Lindens should be happy to know that Firestorm is uh, now completely up to date with your latest code. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news: everything is broken, and we'll probably be three years before we get it fixed. Well. That's the way it works. Oh, stats. Yes, we need stats. Oh, yes. Uh, I've been so swamped with trying to get the excuses silly viewers done. Uh, I, I, will, I will do some stats on Tuesday. Remind me on Tuesday, Jessica. Okay. Really, I will. On Tuesday. Monday is the Linden holiday, or I would do it on Monday. What holiday? Can you twist Izzy's arm to... Uh... Come to the next TPV meeting? Uh, I can try. Cool. I've got a few things that I'd like to uh, go over with them. Okay. A couple proposals. and uh, I'd like us to have more communication back and forth so that we could let them know the things that we're seeing and hopefully they can let us know what they're seeing. Yeah, that's great. It's okay, Kata. We haven't had stats in like nine months. <laughs> it hasn't been that long. <laughs> I can't remember the last time we had stats. <laughs> I think I gave you some in November. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it was like last year. <laughs> last year. Yeah. It was last year. I, I admit that it was last year. Come on, Jessica's here. It's only 20 after, and. I am actually don't have a lot done. to say because I've got like other work to do right now. When Keta, we had that. Stats per OS. That was what Oz gave us last. Oh, right. I got a, I got a lovely note from a, a very nice um, and, and very helpful note from a Firestorm user um, begging me to please address the keyboard slowdown issues on the Mac and telling me that she thought the Firestorm developers were very close to figuring it out. Uh, we, we, we are? <laughs> <laughs> That's news to me. Well, hey, you know, I mean, you have a reputation Cinder, to uphold, apparently. That? Yeah, actually, the, the latest work we had was from Cinder in that regard. I don't even have the... In other news, Oz, uh, this is for Linen Lab. Uh, we have users that complain to us about our viewer and, and you know, highly praise yours. For example, I had a user just today say, it would be great if you Firestorm people fired every dev you had hired and stopped being failures to the programming world. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, please fix this issue before you release, then I might change my views. At the moment, SLV3 is better than Firestorm. So there you go. Well, at least there's one out there. <laughs> um, yeah, well. Cindy, I believe we pulled in, uh, well, the fixes that you pointed us to anyway. If you had other fixes, we didn't know. <laughs> 
They're, we get them a lot. No, we really want Mac fixes, actually. Well, at least we have other fixes, you know, that Linen Labs has. Yeah, except it totally breaks our LV. Oh, uh, and in the way this merge, there's more Mac fixes. Oh, we got more Mac stuff. Cool. Well, our OVA in Firestorm at the moment is, from what I understand, more or less FUBAR. Uh, as a result of this latest merge frenzy. But we're up to tip. Yeah, we could like release the 32-bit windows. It compiles. That's about it. That was 64-bit windows. I'm going to try that later. But yeah, like I said, if it compiles, we can ship it, right? Curie is just redundant. That's for users. Well, apparently our RLVA is really far behind Marine. I don't know. I don't use it. But, um... Is it? Hmm. I don't know. I think two four nine is what we're on. Kitty's been in the hospital a lot, that hasn't helped. Too much of that going around. Well, if, if we're if we're out of topics, we can. I think we're out of all quit and topics. Go home early. Woohoo! Uh, How is that coming on the Windows path changes to auto build? You mentioned some few days. Ago. Uh, those are all integrated into the tools update branch. So, um, that was quite a lot of changes to our, to our build scripts, but, uh, it's, it seems to be working right. And we've got a pretty good wiki page that I just need to edit to make an external version because right now it's, it's from your point of view cluttered with pointers to where Lindens can download things and get keys for things. Um, but we'll, we'll get a publicly, consumable version of that out on the public wiki um, early next week. Uh, and that describes in uh, very careful detail exactly what to install from a, from basically from Windows up um, in order to have a working development environment. Um, our, our, the, the level of guarantee is that it works for us uh, and that it works if that's exactly what you do and you don't start with anything that wasn't in that list and you don't add anything that isn't in that list and you don't substitute anything that is in that list. Um, the, unfortunately, the world being what it is, these things can be kind of fragile. Um, we've found, a, we've in the course of this project, we've found a whole bunch of ways to set it up that's almost like this and doesn't work. So uh, uh, that's the caveat you all need to be um, aware of. And if we can find more flexible solutions, uh, that's okay, but we're going to try and we're going to, we're going to try and keep a really minimalist definition uh, available. Um, and basically it's the recipe we're going to give to the people who build our build farm systems and say, 
build exactly this and it will work. And then if developers have exactly that, it will work. Uh, so that's that's the hope. Uh, At least we don't have to express the edition of Visual Studio anymore. Right, right. And one of the things I have not yet attempted to do um, and would be really delighted to have uh, participation from the community on is um, I have not yet attempted to touch anything in the um, the open source versions of the configurations. Um, so um, um, why it did may you be the debug build configurations. I did. Well, I took all the debug configurations out. Yes, I did do that. Why? Because they're basically a waste of time. Uh, they. That's they a lot of warning messages. Sorry. Work. Um. They uh, in well, I, I mean, I pulled our internal development team. It, um, none of us could recall having needed to use one in years. Um, and they're actually in our build infrastructure, at least. They're a quite frequent source of spurious build failures that turn out not to be important or interesting. Um. And they, at the very least, they take another, um, you know, they, they increase the, the time to build by a third. Because we, when we do a build, we build all three. We have been building all three. Now we're only building two, so it takes only two-thirds as long as it used to. Um, and that's pretty significant, especially on Windows. Um, the Windows builds are much slower than the other platforms. So um, we just decided they weren't worth the... the um, they weren't worth the maintenance expense to keep them around, uh, and and the performance expense of slowing down the builds. Uh, so a typical a typical Windows build on our infrastructure was an hour and a half, and now it's only an hour, and that's a significant improvement. That's you know another couple of builds a day if you're turning them around fast. Oh, um, in that change set, you don't actually need to add it to release with debug info because release with debug info is actually a debug build against the release libraries. Um, that flag is only needed in release builds, in which case it generates extra information about inlining. Which, uh, send, send me the, send me the um, delta you think and why. I, I, I pasted into chat uh, the uh, commit on oh. the bucket. Uh. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong chat panel. Uh, here. Yeah, you don't need that flag in release with debug info because um, since it's a debug build, uh, it, it basically does nothing. The slash ZO? Yes, it's meant for optimized configurations. Um, so Visual Studio, uh, well, the uh, Microsoft Visual C compiler will output information about inlining and various local variables um, to the debugging information so uh, it gives clear stack traces. Okay. Well, I'll pass that on to the people who worry about such things. I, I don't build on Windows much myself. It, it does uh, make it a much, much pleasanter experience to debug Windows builds with that. Um, okay. Um, any other last minute things? Last call. I have nothing. Uh, is Monty looking at updating curl at all? Um, Monty has moved on to other things, but somebody will be looking at updating curl. Moved um, on to other things. Uh, he's not working on HTTP for the viewer anymore. Is so he was finished on... with that? It's it's been finished for some weeks now. I understood. He well, had uh, more tweaks his to do. what he was doing is finished. Oh, okay. Um, there is, there is there is still um, there is still lots of use of the old HTTP uh, in various places that haven't been moved to the new implementation. And um, actually, if anybody's looking for a an, a, a, pro a project that would be much appreciated. Uh, pick one of the places that's 
using the old implementation of HTTP and move it to the new one. I was actually looking at doing that. That would be a really great thing to do. Because um, LL curl makes me very sad to try to figure out what's going on. Right. Uh, that would be great. Um, so, the, 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 there is a new curl update that we want to, we will want to build as a, you know, as a package, uh, update our package and, and then retest. But, uh, I don't expect to attempt that until it's after we've got the new tools released. Um, curls, uh, Monty's curl bug, uh, one, four, two, zero, the, um, HTTP pipelining timeout right. corruption thing. Right. But it's a, it's, it's a, um, I, I, I had that conversation with Monty and, um, and he is of course available to help support our efforts to do that update. But, um, is he still working? On it, is, it is, it is, it is, a, it is his is opinion that, that it will be require us very significant regression testing effort when we do that upgrade. So I don't want to fold that into anything else that we're doing now. We'll treat it as a separate project. Is he um, still in SL with us, or is he on the new platform now? Uh, he's doing stuff I don't discuss. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so he's on the new That's platform That's not cryptic now. at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> it, it, he's totally working on the new thing. He's mostly working on the new thing. Okay. Okay. See, that's all. Uh, but but he's that's, cons that's, he is he is consulting on on our uh, when we need him, and is we Rune do Heist occasionally working need on, him. Um, SL or is he working on the new thing too? Uh, no comment. Uh, actually, really both. Thing. Both really. Um. <laughs> <laughs> In other Page. words, Monty is a shared resource. Keep it clean. Oh, we, we discovered what's eating texture memory and causing the nasty thrashing thing. What? Which uh, nasty uh, oh. thrashing thing? Oh, the, uh, the, 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 the things go blurry thing. and then come back and then yes. go blurry and then go back? So, you know those how um, when Chewie got introduced, how uh, the chat list has avatar icons for everyone and everything? Uh, yeah. So when there's a ton of group chats open from that, it can it will continually consume memory. The textures allocated for that, even after the uh, UI element goes out of um, scope and is destructed, will be retained for the remainder of the session because they were allocated as UI textures. Really? So it will slowly grow that until you, well, it, until you run out of memory. Um, the other day I was doing some testing with it, and I had allocated over a gigabyte of video memory, and it was causing my system to, well, lock. Well, a fix for that it will is... um, earn you major brownie points, especially uh, from Grumpity are... sitting behind me here. We are looking into uh, it rather closely, because it's making my computer very sad. That's cool. That's, that's really great news. I appreciate that um, one. Fixing, getting more video memory does not actually fix it due to how the viewer manages um, video memory and the texture system itself. Once it hits that, its own internal limit on what X amount of texture memory is set, it will start thrashing heavily anyways. So just increase the limit, right? That's all we have to do. Um, <laughs> if I remember right, Wait. Runitai was actually looking into doing that, and it caused some strange regressions. Yeah, we we tried that recently, and we had to get we had to we sort of timed out on our ability to spend time on it. We'll we'll try again at uh, some point. But, that's a really uh, good I, find. I I it, it it's very interesting if you actually go and well have the avatar and group icons just set all of them to default and then compare the memory usage um, after opening your friends list <laughs> um, with the with basically allocating all the images for my friends list it will consume 120 to 175 megabytes of memory and then it doesn't give it back when you close it again it will never give it back and that also allocates about 300 textures that will never be released 
That includes wow. all the management thereof in the in the overhead of iterate of the larger iteration size of the texture uh, system itself, and otherwise. Well, that's interesting. It suggests it suggests that it might be worth doing a sweep through the code just to see what else is getting allocated as as UI memory. Um, anything basically that displays in the UI itself instead of in the world, um, little icons for groups. Um, what what else? Uh, that's the only thing off the top of my head uh, that I can think of. Um, let's see that that uh, map tiles are properly released. I did check that um, they they will properly release themselves when the map floater is closed. Huh. Reopening it does not grab more memory. The uh, images are allocated based uh, on a. Um, they are marked as no delete, no discard. Uh, so they they'll just be there uh, when anything needs to actually reuse the image. It won't have to allocate a second one. Um, it, it won't add any additional memory impact having multiple ones uh, displayed on the screen, but it, it will always be there. Compact chat will not reduce the load, regardless of if you anything that displays the little um, the uh, LL avatar list items uh, like the nearby, the people list, uh, Chewy. Um, even if you have the icons hidden, uh, it will still allocate the element for it and do the fetch. Uh, so if you ever actually unhide it, it won't have to uh, fetch it that time. From what I can see in the code and my own debugging. Well, that's a really good find. Yeah. Um, feel free to file a patch on that one. We'll get that one in integrated fast. Well, we've um, had people yeah. complain, though, of texture thrashing even on a fresh log, like freshly logged um, in. I, my guess is there's more than way, way to do it. But. Jess, um, ask them if they have giant friends lists. That, that will cause it. Since the oh, friends right. list of course. has to allocate all those little pictures... Well, depending on how big it is, like with mine, it, it is close to 150 to 200, depending on the day. For some reason, I don't get that, but eh. Uh, so basically, we're talking texture thrashing here, not the blur res cycle? It, it is the blur res cycle, because when it, start, when it hits that limit, it will start deallocating textures and reallocating textures, since the actual... Air, the, um, uh, give me a second. And you've... And you've You've created a bunch of textures that don't participate in that. Uh, okay, yes, so, so my, that, my that question then my question then becomes how why is it that a lot of users disabling HTTP fetch textures actually fixes their blur res cycle? Uh, if I remember right, that changes something about the texture fetch system. It, 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 that, that whole area of code is very scary, and I, I still later grumpy figured it entirely out well just i just brought that that up simply because i'm not a coder by any stretch well, of the imagination that, but you know it might give you a hint HTTP, as to where it could work http disabling http may be just reducing the problem in some other means just enough that the texture thrashing stops it, 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 the, what i was ex when i was experiencing um it was swapping textures rapidly, causing it to blur them and uh, reload them, depending on how uh, micro camera movements and things like that due to the um, interest list system. Right. Well, the other the other thing about uh, about that is that Ed is uh, it's often the case that we end up with multiple paths to the same end user visible behavior. So it's yeah, it's sure. entirely possible that there's more than one way to get this texture thrashing going. Um, and that, and that, doing something to your message transport uh, affects some of those modalities. And having giant friends lists and chat windows uh, affects uh, yes. others. Because ultimately, Actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you run out of video RAM. It, once you have started to run out of video RAM, you're in that. You're in that state. Yes. Uh see anything else I noticed about that uh, you might be leaking shader ob uh, shader program objects 
uh-huh. when people turn uh, graphics settings like um, shadows and stuff on and off, it will re- it reloads the shaders. And um, I think you have a leak there when I was looking at it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's probably not something that happens happens all that often, but um, it was like twenty still, minutes of memory. If we can fix it, we can fix it. That's it's good because most of our crashes are memory related, ultimately. And if I remember, at Cinder, I think she staged a bunch of my fixes in. Some yes, for she did, and those I will integrate on the snowstorm branch um, as soon as we have. Uh, gotten our heads above water on the on the on the tool stuff because they were predicated on the tools upgrade. Um, so I will I will integrate those and quite soon. Uh, that's I already promised that to are property. Actually rather significant leaks too, um, from what I was yeah, noticing. That's great. Okay, um, I I too have a timeout coming up here. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Great. Thank you very much, oh, everybody. I, I, I had a question about your updater system. Yeah, sure. Um, how do you handle the difference between 32 and 64-bit builds? Um, and how does it identify what is a 32-bit or 64-bit build? Uh, well, how do we do it right now and how do we want to do it? is two slightly different questions. How does it work right now? Um, right now, what we do is have people who want to use the updater um, do a different channel name. Uh, um, so but there is, there, is a room, there is room for it, uh, making that distinction in the, um, in the update protocol. There's a parameter for it. Um, but we haven't implemented the back end of that. But that's not a big you job. To we're gonna to we're gonna we'll do that for the updater. Uh, I have a wiki page about that somewhere, so I don't want to do it from memory because if I'm conflicting with the wiki page, then I'm the one who's wrong. Um, hang on a second, maybe I can find it quickly. Uh, uh, yes, I can. How convenient! I have a bookmark. Yes, because we were kind of interested in using the updater. For, this is for alchemy? Yes. Yeah. Um, because we generally try to keep a two-month release cycle, and not not everyone checks our blog that often. Right. Um, have a look at that, and we'll and talk about it next week if you want. Okay? Okay. All right. Because uh, I'll... I'll uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that with you. Okay. Um, I, I think everybody should use the updater, Firestorm people. Oh, we, we we do pretty good with, with uptake now. Y- yes, because I've had a number of users request um, auto-updates. Yeah. Cool. The, the problem is you're going to get people that like it and the other people that hate it. Right. And, I'm sure. Know, you're never going to please everybody. We, we have that problem, too. Um. Yes, Cinder is our release manager. We're 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 actually we actually just queued up a change to it. Uh, Grumpity asked for a change to it right now. The and we're gonna we're gonna do it one of these days soon. Um, <clears throat> right now, if you're running a release candidate viewer and then you go into your options and say I'm not willing to accept updates, it immediately upgrades you back to the default release, which is of course a lower version number because that's the way release candidates work. Um, so people get distressed because they have they said they didn't want to be updated and they got downgraded. But anyway, so uh, once we've made that change, if you're running a candidate viewer, you'll just be running the candidate viewer even though you said you didn't want to be because after all, you did it anyway on your own. <coughs> we won't put you in it, but if you download it and start running it, we'll leave you in it. Uh, at least until that version is invalidated and replaced by something else. But that's an upgrade, not a downgrade. So. But. All right. I got to run. Thank you, folks. Thank you. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a good weekend, everyone.
Drake, good find on that. Kudos. Yes, it, it was the result of me not sleeping for a while and then freaking out. About, about why nothing was loading. <laughs> I've never okay. actually been able to reproduce it myself, but um, I know it happens a lot. I, I'm in a See, lot of groups that like to be very, very chatty, and uh, it's more severe with Chewy because it will load uh, avatar icons for group members. Yeah. Um. So, so then you really, really quickly run out of it. Well, our support group is... The English group is just ridiculously busy, and that would actually explain why a lot of our our users uh, have it. Because if they're they've got that group open, the, for the little toast, um, you know the little chat toasts that give the, the little avatar icon with their name and the message. Uh, th those will also cause allocation of those. So so even if you don't have Chewy, if you have a lot of chatty people, it will still pull the images for them for that. I think we have toast yeah. off by default, don't we? Depends on the uh, mode you're on, on Jeff. Skin, eh? Yeah. Well, mode more than the skin. Yes. Which I'd actually like to see. I need our to do more memory profiling today too, because to I want to figure out what the the other half of the large bloat I saw earlier is. I know uh, mesh uh, skin info header uh, never gets cleared out, uh, so. That, that, that's a nice little sized um, uh, map, uh, map 